I'm going to share my story, my, my life in Geelong. First start is 2003. A popular street girl gives us a look into the dark side of Geelong. Born and bred in Singapore, 39-year-old Nancy shared with TISG some of the lesser-known, darker secrets of Geelong, the red light district. After losing her job during the SARS pandemic, Nancy had to look for other means to survive. I need income. I lost my saving. So I stepped in Geelong to try to get money to survive. Being 21 years old, out of a job and deemed too young for menial labor such as dishwashing, Nancy took a chance and stepped into Geelong. I stopped at door 18 bus stop, just at 7 uh, 11 the site. It's in between the door 18 and the Gela Road Junction. I stepped down and walked around, walk around the whole Gelang. I decided my first Gelang door 18 coffee shop. I just sit down and I'm very, very lucky that there's an uncle sit on top of the coffee shop and tell me, girl, there's a rate, there's, a, there's a operations, it's going around. Having been in relationships that were sexual in nature from age 19, Nancy was not unaware of what lay ahead when she decided to join the sex trade. Before that, I'm not virgin. Before that, I got a, I had a boyfriend in the relationship with my ex-boyfriend. My first relation is on 19. He asked me about 14 years gap. Sex work is not easy and had its challenges right from the start. I think it's a long 14. There's a hotel. My first customer is a Bangladeshi. And I don't have any experience and after the session, he never paid me after the session. He ran away. He ran away the first time I get the first customers. I feel very angry that this is my first time and yet I left five dollars in my pocket. Five dollars left in my pocket and I spent the money to buy a drink to get the first client. And now pick me after the session of few hurts. I feel like anger, my anger is there. I, I can't do anything and I don't dare to make a police report that time because I, I'm the illegal freelancer. First customer, they'll pay me. And this, the second client also from Bangladeshi, they bring me to the new condo at Low 16, between the Low 16 and Low 18. From the day I stand behind the condo, my business will be start to be better and better. She tells us what it was like as a new girl in the industry. The first time, first night I take about eight customers the first day. That I I was a new girl. Very lucky I'm the new girl, I get a lot of tips from them. For example, I get forty dollars from the clients. I came up with extra tips, ten dollars or thirty dollars or or be double on my price, eighty dollar up from the room, and the room, the the landlord of the short town room, he liked me a lot, and they call me money god. I use his room until the because the room is just only five. In my time, seventeen years ago, the, the time is just uh, five dollars half an hour. It's just operating twelve hours operation. It will start evening 6 until 1 6. Always go there, apart from second shift, just like factory operator, they are third shift. So I think I went there around afternoon, uh, around, three, around 3 something, I go reach out there. And, and I first used this room. Within half an hour, I came up from the room. Within uh, just about one or two minutes, I walk in to use the room until there's a one uncle and the staff room they give up and give me use their room i will go there they, they like to they, they're so happy that they, they saw me i use his room until they get they no time to clean up the bed every inch of the room it starts better and better i can manage to get 10 customers per night and the most i can, I can get it about 400 per night, even though I work until my leg shaking. Slowly making her way up, Nancy pushed herself to the limits trying to make money. I still stand for about 12 hours. From, from second shift, I work until my body is shaking, tiring, I still continue. Sometimes it will be 10. In the day, I, I feel like not enough. I still want to get more money. Even though my leg is shaking, I could get about 12 customers in that night. After I earn the money, I will go to Mustafa. 
to spend on the money for shopping, cosmetic. Luckily, I shop for those uh, usable. It's not those like channel use. I will shop for sewing, coloring, my makeup, and those I need. Also, I sometimes, uh, in last minute, uh, I go buy a Javi suit and one sari. First, can try to control my... I try to control, but couldn't. Until after a week, I could control my orgasm with the customers. An influx of girls from overseas put up a hard fight competing for customers with local girls. There's a one client, he used to be a government server. He told me that because I got the look, but I don't have the body shape, because the China girl just came into Singapore. Very high competition with the China girl. They go in sweet talk, go in talking, and some of them will do plastic surgery. Some of the girls have been cheated to come to Singapore. Actually, the agency in China tells them they will get a job, professional job to Singapore. But they are not told that in the end, they end up in Geelang to work on the street as a street girl. So some of them, they roll a lot of money from the China and come to Singapore to earn bigger money on the street. A lot of them, a lot of them told me that some of the local, girl, local people tell me, don't believe to those girls who work on the street. After a surprise encounter with a generous customer, Nancy found her permanent workspace at Lorong 18 in Geelong. I came out from after 11, before 11, I need to get my last pass to go back to Rome. And I walked out from the hotel. I walked through the, I go to coffee shop to rice flour. I got one uncle. This uncle saw me that he got the orgasm. Because he never had this before, he never take the girl at Sally orgasm into his pants. And she, and on the spot, he gave me 200, put it inside a pack, red packet and gave it to me. For the days of work, my station or the Yelang Lower System is my popular place for me to start the life in Yelang. I'm now 18, 18 years. Looking for other ways to earn money, Nancy decided to get into a marriage of convenience, as recommended by a friend of hers. However, things did not go well for her. My first marriage, then nobody dared to do it. I don't know why I got this courage to get this marriage. This marriage is a condition marriage. It's not a love marriage. Because if you want PR, I want, I want money. And it is, it is a legalized registered marriage. It's recommended by my good friend, 15 years good friend. He got his girlfriend. I got my, my, my boyfriend at the time. We, th we don't have any sex before. A few months, I met my ex-husband at Geelong or 16. And both of us just broken. Husband had the prison record and came to me. And we get uh, off. And I recommend him to work at PSA as a contract staff. He get the interview, get the training, and he going to have the last assessment. At the time, we just shifting in Malaysia, Johor Bahru. We ran the hotel room at Joe Baru at Blangi, the site. And the last assignment, she got blocked by the custom because of the illegal cigarette. And he got charged for one and a half year. I was waiting for him. And he promised me inside the prison, he will look after me after he released from the prison. I never thought that he came out from the prison. He, he gave me a broken, broken promise. And they give me a just one year of marriage. They use balance on me, and all the while that housework and bring the money back in the same time. And I keep my one eyes closed because I, he told me he got a psychological problem. I not concentrate on one job, so he went one week full, and another week he on and off to start out his job. And I, I need to hide from him that I work on the street. I went there. I need to do my housework until my until I overtired. My body break down. My body break down and I worked inside the hospital. I couldn't check what happened to my body. And I wanted to build up my strength at the time. I couldn't make it anymore. Moving forward, Nancy tells us how life is years later. Now I work at the Distortion Center to give advice to those younger, don't follow my footsteps. And also the truth to my boyfriend, I want to get out of this place. This is brought to you by The Independent Singapore. Watch this channel for more news and documentaries.